The ever-iconic Ultraman Tiga stars Guts, an elite group who are tasked with combating various kaijus all over the world. During one of these kaiju attacks, one of the members of Guts, Daigo, gets the power to become Ultraman Tiga, a type-changing giant of light that can combat the kaijus much easier. Ultraman Tiga was the first Japanese-produced Ultra series of the Heisei era, and with the long time gap between it and 80, it brought several changes behind the scenes. It marked the beginning of Bandai's long-standing support towards the Ultra series to fund and make merchandise for it, along with grabbing up-and-coming star at the time, Hiroshi Nagano, thanks to a deal of Johnny's and Associates, a deal that would ultimately bite them in the ass when it came to re-releasing the show on streaming and DVD. But that was future Tsuburaya Productions problems. 1997 Tsuburaya Productions was disappointed with the show, but it was still a smash hit by all regards as a revived Ultraman for weekly broadcast of new entries. Tiga is still a well-beloved Ultraman series for so many out there to this day, because for many Ultraman fans, it was their first exposure to the series thanks to the wide presence in other Asian countries and even a few Western ones Tiga had. As for how I feel about the show, having a few modern and classic Ultraman series under my belt already, it's good, but it lacks in a few areas for my liking. One of the series' biggest strengths and weaknesses is the variety of stories it tells thanks to the variety of writers that make Tiga what it is. While certain writers help more than others, there's no sole voice in the Tiga writing room. Some stories will focus on what the kaiju is doing, some will focus on a gimmick or effect the kaiju or alien of the week is using, some will be about a member of Guts' inner struggles, and others will just be visually fascinating mix-ups. It's a solid update of the Monster of the Week formula for a late 90s audience, Audience while still retaining the core appeal of the Ultraman series up to this point. On the other hand, this leads to the show not having an interesting thematic backbone to lay on. It's just generally a sci-fi series that decides what it wants to talk about on an episode-to-episode -episode basis, which is enjoyable, but even the Showa series have more of a connective thematic tissue between episodes, so it makes Tiga's a lack of one more noticeable. When I was watching the first few episodes, I thought it would have a lot to say about humanity's fast progress of technology, but it doesn't really have anything interesting to say other than, eh, will be fine. I still find Tiga to be a fun show, but I wish there was more to the show's messages than the basic humanity can be cool. It doesn't help that the main protagonist of Tiga, Daigo, is just an okay character. I like when he interacts with other members of Guts, but on his own, he is the definition of protagonist man. Luckily, the other members of Guts do have more personality and depth than Daigo, with my favorite being Masami Hori, who's billed as the comic relief character, but has the focus on some of the best episodes in the show in my opinion, especially the one where he finally confesses to the the woman he loves. I really appreciate when comic relief characters have underlying heart and passion to them. On the topic of characters, one of the most memorable story arcs in the show features one of the first evil Ultraman, Evil Tiga. What I find to be interesting about Evil Tiga comes with his host, Kengo Masaki. He believes that Ultraman should have control over humanity's evolution instead of being a passerby. This leads to him wanting to use the power of light for himself to lead his perfect society. Those greedy intentions backfire as when he steals Tiga's transformation trinket to fuse with the legendary Ultraman statue, his greedy intentions corrupt the giant into Evil Tiga. I find it a cool case study on why not every average fellow can be an Ultraman and how, for better or worse, humanity needs to decide their own path outside of the influence of Ultraman or any higher being. Ultraman should merely be a figure to inspire us all to do the right thing rather than have control over our whole lives. On a more lighter note, I've seen people compare the show to Kamen Rider's own Heisei-era revival, Kamen Rider Kuga, and while both Tiga and Kuga hold similar places in their respective franchises, I found the two shows immensely different in what they try to do to revive the franchise. While Kuga aimed to reinvent the traditional Kamen Rider elements with more mystical artifacts and down-to-earth stories, Tiga is simply an updated version of what worked in PATH shows that flirts with new ideas that later shows would expand and improve on. Neither of these approaches are superior or weaker to each other, but I find it super interesting on how these shows can be held in a similar high regard when the core contents and how they revived each franchise is very different when you actually watch them. I guess what I'm trying to say is, while Ultraman Tiga didn't break new ground or try something radically different, different for the Ultra series, it's still a solid show that kept a lot of the appeal of the classics for a new audience. While its characters and themes may not be the richest, there's still a lot of fun sci-fi concepts and cool fights to keep someone engaged. It's also a good beginner show if you want something not as old as the Showa entries, but not as flashy as the New Generation series. While I may not be as personally attached to Tiga as some others, I still enjoyed it and I love how it laid the groundwork for future shows. Also yes, take me higher bops and I'm so sad it got removed from the American DVD and streaming release, but hey, I still like the new song that Voyager made. From the past to save the future is a pretty raw lyric.